I'm just different. I'm just different. I was just going home. I don't have a gun or... I don't do any fighting. I don't do that stuff. I... My 
name is Elijah. Elijah McClain. I'm sorry, I... I wasn't trying to do that. I, I wasn't trying to do that. You're beautiful. <laughs> You're phenomenal. You're, you're so strong. And I, I, just, I just, I can't breathe correctly. I just can't breathe correctly. I'm just different. That's all. Just different. No, sorry. I'm an introvert. And I just can't breathe correctly. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't.
becomes to assimilate separates, divide, segregates and strikes or jags, two becomes to assimilate separates, divide, segregates and strikes or jags, two becomes to assimilate separates, divide, segregates and strikes or jags, two becomes to assimilate separates, and history and consciousness jewel anew. And history and consciousness jewel anew. The black body separates from the American body. The American body is the white body. The black body separates from the American body. The American body rejects the black body. The black body separates from the American body. The American body rejects the black body. The black body is instructed to assemble into the American body. The American body is the white body. And history and consciousness jewel anew. 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 Divine segregates and strikes with jags to become us to assimilate separates. Divine segregates and strikes with jags to become us to assimilate separates. Divine segregates and strikes with jags to become us to assimilate separates. The white body segregates the black body from the American body. The white body instructs the black body to assimilate into the American body. The white body rejects the black body assimilating into the American body. And history and consciousness jewel anew.
Welcome to our annual Pinkster Day ceremony. Today, today we celebrate the revelation of truths. As the Pinkster King, I have the power every year to settle disputes. Our first problem, why were we brought here from Africa? There still seems to be disagreement on this issue. So I will present the facts before rendering my judgment. Let us begin with the words of a previous African king from the Kingdom of Congo, Nzinga Mbemba, King Afonso I. In 1526, Afonso I wrote King Joao III, the King of Portugal, to complain about the treatment of his people by the Portuguese.
Sir, your highness should know how our kingdom is being lost by the excessive freedom given by your agents and officials to the men and merchants who are allowed to come to this kingdom. We cannot reckon how great the damage is since the mentioned merchants are taking every day our natives, sons of the land, and the sons of our noblemen and vassals and our relatives. They grab them and get them to be sold. And so great, sir, is the corruption and licentiousness that our country is being completely depopulated. That is why we beg of your highness to help and assist us in this matter. It is our will that in these kingdoms there should not be any trade of slaves nor outlet for them. It is our duty to do justice and to restore to the free men their freedom. To avoid such a great evil, we passed a law so that any white man living in our kingdoms and wanting to purchase goods in any way should first inform three of our noblemen and officials of our court whom we rely upon in this matter. King Joao III did send King Afonso I the following response. You tell me that you want no slave trading in your domains because this trade is depopulating your country. The Portuguese there, on the contrary, tell me how vast the Congo is and how it is so thickly populated that it seems as if no slave has left. Greed brought us here. That is my judgment. Next issue. The West India Company needed us to do most of the work to build the New Netherlands settlement. Uh, you know, New York. Therefore, our work helped create New York. There seems to be disagreement about this topic too. Listen. Here are quotes by the leaders of the West India Company that support my position. Negroes would accomplish more work for their masters and at less expense than farm servants, who must be bribed to go thither by a great deal of money and promises. Here's another one. In regard to Negroes, they ought to be stout and strong fellows, fit for immediate employment on this fortress and other works. Also, if required, in war against the savage natives, either to pursue them when retreating, or else to carry some of the soldiers' baggage. Um, build, fight, and carry bags? Some things never change. Obviously, we were indispensable. Finally, I present to you official testimony from the West India Company. Honorable Mr. William Keeft, director in the New Netherland for the General Chartered West India Company, testified declared and attested that it is true and truthful that he was as overseer of the Negroes belonging to the company constantly employed with said Negroes in the building of Fort Amsterdam, which was completed 
in the year 1635. Also, in cutting timber and firewood, as well for the large house as for the guard house, splitting rails, clearing land, burning lime, and helping gather the company's grain in the harvest, and considerable other work, which we performed with the Negroes. All of which the opponent declares to be true. Having done this to bear testimony to the truth, as everyone is bound to do, especially when required to do so. Thus done in Fort Amsterdam, this 22nd of March, 1639. One hundred and fifty-five years later, in 1794, people observed that on Dutch farms, the oldest slave manages the lands, directs the cultivation of it, and without consulting him, the master can do nothing. I'm ready to give my ruling. After considering all of the facts, I have concluded that we helped to build this place. My judgment is for 400 years of back pay with interest. After years of mistreatment, to quote King Afonso I, we cannot reckon how great the damage is. That is why every year on the Monday after Pentecost, I ask for payment during our Pinkster celebration. Not convinced? Why did we not ask for payment in our freedom before? We did. I even know the names of the people who asked for their freedom and payment. My ruling addresses a broken contract revealed in the following document. William Kieft, Director General, and the Council of New Netherland, having considered the petition of the Negroes named Paolo Angelo, Big Manuel, Little Manuel, Manuel de Garrett de Reus, Simon Congo, Anthony Portuguese, Gracia, Peter Santome, John Francisco, Little Anthony, and Jean Fort Orge, who served the company for 18 to 19 years, that they may be released from their servitude and be made free, especially as they have been many years in the service of the honorable company here, and long since have been promised their freedom. Therefore, we, the director and council, do release the aforesaid Negroes and their wives from their bondage of the term of their natural lives, hereby setting them free and at liberty on the same footing as other free people here in New Netherland. In return for their granted freedom shall each man for himself be bound to pay annually Here it is. In return for their granted freedom, shall each man for himself be bound to pay annually as long as he lives to the West India Company 
or their agent here. The Negroes, each for himself, promise to pay annually, beginning from the date hereof on pain, if anyone shall fail to pay the annual recognition, of forfeiting his freedom and again going back into the servitude of the said company, with the express condition that their children, at present born or yet to be born, shall remain bound and obligated to serve the Honorable West India Company as slaves. Thus done the 25th of February, 1644, in Fort Amsterdam, in New Netherlands. No payment, half free. We asked for freedom and payment and were made half free. Every year, we have paid for our freedom in some way. I will return next year to demand our payment. 